Okay, so hello everyone. This is a discussion. This video, is this is okay? not a meme -me video. This is a discussion video with no legs in the background. Okay, Nothing like just, that. We're just here to have a chat. The video that went up yesterday with Yong Ye and Jason Shry, I think, was really interesting. All right? It is, and I didn't think that we were originally going to cover this. No, no. But, you know, we we both watched the thing in, in, in its entirety, and we've been following the tweets, and we've been just uh, keeping an eye on it, really. And totally. I've, I, I've definitely found that there's just a lot of stuff that we want to talk about. For sure. So, so... Jinx! Jinx! So we'll do that. Uh, let's get the drop out of the way. So I think first of all, we should say that we don't want this to be some kind of let's all trash Jason Schreier kind of discussion. Yeah, okay? I agree with that. Because I'll make clear that I very much respect Jason Schreier's work. Yep. I don't think there's a journalist out there who's sort of breaking news more than Jason is. And yep. I think it's hard for anyone to argue that point. Like yeah. realistically, you may think Jason Schreier is the worst human on the planet, okay? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you must concede. That, very, that no one else is going in behind enemy lines and breaking, and breaking news, the news as he often he, as he is, okay? So I certainly respect um, his work. Definitely. And, and I feel like he's... And I, I actually don't have an opinion on him as a person because I don't really follow his tweets, I don't follow his commentary. So I, I have a, a respect for his for his professionalism yeah. and I don't have a view of him as a person. Yeah, I, I think that we can respect the fact that he is definitely a, a very influential figure. For that, sure. That he's able to go you know, behind the scenes and, and, and break these stories and really change the gaming landscape. His job is to go in there and find the facts. Mm. I think of all the journalists that are working out there, he does that better than anybody else. Oh, okay? yeah, I agree with that. I so, agree with that. so that's the ground rules. I think the other thing is as well, like, you know, let's try and keep comments about the content rather yes. than about Jason and his personality and all that sort of shit. Yeah. Because that's not what this discussion should be about. I agree. Um, so let's just keep that in mind as well, okay? Mm -hmm. He was on Yong Ye. Yong Ye invited. Oh, actually, I think Jason suggested that, um, that yeah, they do so this discussion. It, it, it was ultimately a tweet that, that Jason came out and said, um, you know, kind of calling out Yong. And then. Uh, the provocateur. The provocateur the YouTube himself. Provocateur. And in the, in, in the tweet, he did say, look, I'm happy to come on the show. Yep. You know, and Yong jumped at the opportunity because, you know, he wanted to discuss some things. And yeah. And good on are. both of them for having that dialogue. A hundred percent. Really, yeah. I think that's a good thing. Because it could have easily just erupted in some Twitter feud, and then totally. that, could, that could have been it, you know? Yeah. So yeah. That, I, I do respect the fact that they're able to both come on, have yeah. a discussion, um, and have disagreements, and keep it civil. I think that the discussion was very illuminating, because I feel that Jason probably encapsulates many viewpoints that gaming journalists have yes. about how to speak about games. And I think Yong encapsulates how a lot of YouTubers feel that they should be talking about mm. games, okay? Um, and there's different ways we can talk about that, but let's just maybe do it a little bit sort of, you know, breaking it down by the major themes within the video. I think the first thing that Jason touches on a lot is this idea of gamer rage. And he very often says this idea the that, anger this, of games. that that, that mm. angers, uh, the gamers are perpetually angry, that we're angry about everything, and that uh, it's this, this this cycle of anger that just does no good whatsoever. Yeah. Okay? And it's unjustified. The, the way he yeah. was putting it forward felt very much that he was taking the position that gamers mm. were unjustified in their anger. Yeah, because I think that from his perspective, what he says that there's so many good games out right now, that getting mad about another game, mm. it doesn't really make sense to him because why focus on the shit at in you know that EA are doing that's pissing you off when you can go and play Return of Obra Dinn, which is this you know new indie game from the guy that made yeah, Papers yeah, Please. Yeah. Okay, so he's basically saying that this culture of rage is unjustified because of the fact that games are in the best place they've ever been, and he and he says this point a few times, right? But I'm saying in general, right now, if you go into Steam, the number of games you can play. I mean, everyone's always talking mm -hmm. about their backlog. They're Steam backlogs, and um, right now, I mean, I just finished Red Dead Redemption Two, which is yeah, absurd. Yeah, of course. Um, and now I'm moving on to Return of the Obra Dinn and Hitman Two, and all these other games mm -hmm. that I want to play. We're at this point where video games are an incredible place. Yeah, their fidelity is these, amazing. Uh, their graphical fidelity, yeah. they're hitting all these artistic bars. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yet at the same time, there's so much rage. What I said, what I said in in, in the comment section of Yong's video was, you know, just because one game is good, doesn't mean that another game cannot be garbage. Mm. Jason talked about the fact that games are pushing technology and artistic boundaries. Sure. You know, we're moving forward at breakneck speed in that front. But at the same time, they're also taking the piss 
And they're pushing the monetization boundaries as far as possible, as mm. fast as possible. Like, it really feels pretty gross a lot of the time now, what AAA publishers are doing, how much they're trying to squeeze into their games, you know, and how sneaky they're being about it. Yeah. Because if you increase the <clears throat> price of a AAA game, I would kind of be okay with that. Yeah, but yeah. if you sneak all this bullshit into it, that mm. undermines my $60 experience because you're trying to trick me into spending $60, it's more yeah. than $60, that's the part that feels really shitty. And, and I think that's the way the industry is going at this point. I agree with that. And not to mention that that structure itself is always going to hurt the basic product of that game. For because sure. when they are incentivized to make sure that the game is punishing the player that pays the least, mm. naturally the game itself then is going to take a huge toll, you know? Um, Absolutely, yeah. I mean, look, at this point, I can't even play sports games anymore because yeah. they are such microtransaction hellscapes mm. that there's no fucking way I'd even bother trying to play it. Do you know mm. what I mean? Like, It kind of feels why? like a mobile game. In, in <laughs> that, that half step up. You know, and then of course we we saw that they, they they tried to push the bounds even more when Star Wars Battlefront 2 came out, mm. a huge backlash. And we've continued to see that with yeah. other games that have come out. Now they're going into you know XP boost to star things or red For orbs sure. with 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 uh, um, Devil May Cry 5. But so that that stuff is still very on the forefront of, of what's going on. I think the argument that gamers are always angry is bullshit. Yeah. You know? Gamers like People who play video games, because I actually hate the word gamers, by the way. I think it's a shitty word. But anyway, cool. uh, people who cool. play video games, gaming community, whatever you want to call it, gamers, you know, like, they love their shit, man. When God of War comes out, people are frothing on that shit. Sure. It's like one of the highest rated games of the generation. Red Dead Redemption 2, one of the highest rated games. Breath of the Wild, like, when games are good, and when they deliver their $60 value in a way that's 100% legit and upfront, yeah. people, like, just... Blow their load even mentioning CD Projekt exactly Red because right. they love that company so much and have so much respect for them. It's a very simple equation. When customers are treated right and you make a good game without screwing us financially, mm. we will sing your praises to high heaven endlessly. But yeah. when you don't do that, we're going to be like, hey, that's fucked. That's shitty. We don't like that. Exactly. It's a very, it, it, it's not a perpetual rage. It's getting angry about the stuff that's shitty. And I think there's a few things to like mention there. I mean, if we look at the example of Destiny 2, I think it's completely fair um, for oh, a gamer man. to be angry when there's a number of things that, that went on there. Not to mention, you know, the, the bogus marketing campaign, mm. the hollow um, release, the multiple, you know, DLCs that were abysmal. Mm. You know, these aren't things that people are just, you know... Uh, it's not unwarranted because people at the end of the day have put money down to purchase something. For sure. Based on, you know, being told that it's the best thing since sliced bread, mm -hmm. you know. So when people are, you know, when people are marketed a product that, of course, doesn't deliver, they are, I think, entitled to show that they are angry. Yeah, you know, I, I, I definitely think that. So that's the, the first part of our mm. game of rage. And, and I, but I think as well, Jason implicitly makes a really interesting point where he says, I don't give a shit about what EA is doing. He's like, I, I don't expect to enjoy anything that they're putting out, okay? It might just be because I'm getting old and just don't have the bandwidth to care as much, or it might just be because I'm excited about so many things in gaming that I just don't right. really like, care that much about the things that bother me, but right. I don't know, like, I, I could give a shit what EA is doing these days. Like, I'm not expecting to enjoy yeah. anything EA puts out these days. I, I think that's really good for Jason, because obviously he doesn't care about, say, FIFA, yeah. for example. He, I mean, he, he might he not care. Maybe about Anthem. Yeah, it's, maybe. it sounded like he was somewhat excited potentially about Anthem, but I agree with you. His um, his interest does not lie with EA's games. Uh, but then that uh, perhaps he doesn't care about Star Wars because they hold the exclusive sure. rights. Personally, I care very deeply about what EA are going to release mm. because I'm a big Star Wars fan and I really want their games to be good. Okay, mm. and I don't have any faith in that company to deliver on that. I also care about the fact that Bioware is now an EA company, one mm. of my favorite studios ever, mm. and if EA are forcing them down a route that is going to result in a shitty game that upsets me i don't I, when i when i talk about stuff in video games i don't just talk about what i think or care about i try and think about what other people think and exactly care about. Um, yeah i don't like fifa but i do think it's shitty that fifa fans have to pay through the nose for sure. ultimate team and they get screwed over that way so yeah. you can't just i think when you're in this position like we are and like jason is you can't just look at well what do i care about am i getting mad about mm, that mm. no well fuck it i don't care you got to think what's the guy next to me caring about yeah. and if they've got a legitimate beef then i think that's something worth speaking up about i agree know? with that i think it's um you know uh, you're right in saying we have very similar jobs and it has to be consumer driven and we might not be a particular type of person 
person that loves a FIFA game, you're right, or a racing game. Mm. Games that we don't play on the reg, but we felt like there was there's definitely a responsibility there to you know, keep on top of the story, understand what's going on with the mi microtransactions or the development of that game, because there are people out there that, you know, are very invested in those companies in yeah. terms of the games that they're making. Totally. So to take the position of, oh, we don't care about uh, what a certain publisher is doing because it, it's not a game that we like, mm. I personally don't agree with that. I mm. think that, you know, if you are in a position like we are, then you are serving the community and you need to always be yeah. um, serving them as best as you can. And that's that's by, definitely by, um, you know, talking about even games that you might not be overly interested in because it's still serving that consumer. I, I, also, I also think there's a floodgates question here as well, which is if EA gets away with bullshit in Ultimate Team, mm. it's going to spill over into other games within their portfolio or other games in general from other developers. Mm. You know, so while Jason may say, well, I don't care about EA, I don't expect to enjoy anything they put out, his favorite game from, I don't know, whatever, Blizzard, mm. might look at the success of EA and be like, well, they're making bank on Ultimate Team. Yep. So we need to put that bullshit into the next fucking StarCraft game. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, and I'm sure- so We mm. can't just look at what, what matters to us and what works for us and think, well, that's fine. We need to think what's going on over there and how is that going to eventually affect me? I agree with that. And I think that, you know, the next frontier is the XP boosters. And I think that other For companies sure. are definitely looking at that and seeing oh, yeah, what's absolutely. happening with Assassin's Creed, what's going to happen with Far Cry, uh, with, with um, Devil May Cry 5, and see how it really goes down. If it go if if the community doesn't have a huge backlash, I bet your bottom dollar in the next five years we'll see more titles that yep. that include that. So and, and early yeah. access is another example of something that's now picking up, and there's more and more of it. Where if you pay more, you get to play a game early. And it's mm. something they spoke about, Jason and. Um, and uh, Yong themselves, you know? So these floodgate things kick in hard, yeah. you know? And I think it's important to stay on top of this, even if it's about games that you don't care about. I anyway, agree. that's that point. Mm. I think the next thing we should talk about is this idea of like rage isn't useful, anger isn't useful. Mm -hmm. and, and I think this is a point that that um, Jason makes repeatedly throughout his, his um, the, throughout the discussion. Yeah. I think anger is actually extremely useful, okay? Used in the right way, yes, correct, I agree. Correct, correct. There's such a thing as like shitty, gross, dirty, toxic anger yeah. that's like personal, it's really fucked, you know, it's bad. And some of it you did see in Yong's comment section, not Yong's fault by the way, and we'll come back to that, we but um, you know, you do see some shitty anger. But anger in the context of what this is and this industry can be really good because it's the means by which we push back and we say, no, that's yeah, not I agree. okay. I, uh, wait, <laughs> wait. In this podcast, they specifically discuss like capitalist structures, mm. okay? And they discuss Bobby Kotick gets like, you know, $28 million, $28 million a year. And, and Jason's like, where's the letter writing campaign? When people get this mad about Blizzard and Wyatt Chang and even just the idea of Blizzard, why aren't people sending mass letters to Bobby Kotick? Why aren't people- Give us his email. Letters? Give us his email address. Why you said, why don't, why don't, where's the letter mailing campaign to Activision HQ? Do you think Bobby Kotick would care if he got two million fucking letters? Do you think it letters? would even be delivered to his desk? Do you think anyone in that company would even bother to dump that mail on his desk? No mm. fucking way. Yeah. It's, it's, it's a, it's a, it's a farce to suggest that, you know, polite disagreement and some letter writing is going to affect change in this industry. You know who the most powerful force in this industry, I think, in this, in this, at this point is? Probably Jim Sterling, yeah. when it comes to his ability to connect with people and like show them why something is fucked, give them powerful talking points that they can use to affect change. There is no way in hell that we would have seen the backlash against like Star Wars Battlefront 2's loot boxes, were it not for Jim Sterling building a case against that bullshit for months and months mm, and months mm. and years before that, so that everyone had the right talking points at that time, so that then we can be like, okay, here's what we say. Do you I, know what I mean? I agree with that. And I think that, you know, Jason's also trivializing the power of social media in that moment, because sure. when you're writing a letter, I mean, it, I'm sorry, but it does not have the power in this day and age compared to jumping on social media, spreading yep. a message, allowing it to be shared, allowing the community to gather as a whole and see how and see the momentum in mm. that message is building yeah so i i really think that this is actually the this is the best way to do it you know for just, sure i know it sounds bad like you know embrace the anger it's like real dark side no thinking, but it's but a like, way to do it though in, it, correct. It, it has to be done in the appropriate way it correct. cannot be personal attacks it has to be about you know factual um, you know, case built around what are the problems and why, and, and, and the facts and figures of why this is angering the community. I, I always know? come back to the example of Guitar Hero, like live. You know, we, Guitar Hero was such an awesome franchise for so long, mm. and I was so excited when this new one was released. 
And then what happened was they made it so you basically need to pay to play specific songs. Yeah. Like they completely fucked that game and now they've had to take the servers down. It's completely dead mm. because they were so greedy with their monetization model. Now I'm sorry, the, I am legitimately angry about that. Mm. And and us because getting we, in- we've played Guitar Hero for like something something to us. the first one. Mean? Correct. Yeah, for so, sure. So, you know, it's not about politely disagreeing, like, hey, maybe just a suggestion, your monetization model could be bad. Mm. It is about being mad. Because if we're not mad and they can't see that we're mad, then they're going to be like, well, fuck it. They're just bending over and taking it. So exactly let's right. stuff it to high heaven with loot boxes. Exactly. I think that, you know, th these publishers are definitely w always waiting to see what the community is going to say because the community's backlash is by far the biggest changer of the gaming industry in the yeah, last two years you sure. know social media has proven to be a huge uh, powerful tool Correct. and as i said before we've seen it with star wars battlefront 2 they took the loot boxes out before it even shipped that game and yeah. it, it never recovered i mean fallout 76 for instance you know the buggy disaster that yeah. was and that was spread on social media that was spread on youtube for sure people understood what that game was actually you know, really going to be at launch, and that has the power for Bethesda, for instance, to come back to the drawing board and mm -hmm. go, okay, this the, the community has spoken, and now we're getting penalised for it. For sure. And I guarantee you, if they, you know, did a, a letter campaign, the message would have been yeah, lost. man. The le message would have been lost. So that's I, like, I, making stamps. <laughs> you know, <laughs> so that that point there, I think, is invalid. And if and if anything, I think it's it it does shed light on the fact that. Th that is a very out of touch way of, of thinking I of think how to connect with the developers and the publishers that are making and these how games. to affect real change. Yeah, I agree yeah. with that. I think that the high level, I think Jason came onto that podcast with the idea that he kind of needed to impart a message to Yong and his audience mm. that they should need to take to heart. I don't really think that's the way that Jason should have approached that. You know, I was disappointed with how Jason conducted himself in that. I, I, I definitely I think was. So. Um, I think so. Look, I still, I'm, I still respect Jason's, um, you know, uh, professional uh, ability to, you know, break stories mm. and 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 put, you know, brilliant articles together that, as I said, does change the gaming landscape. At the same time, I was disappointed to see. His obvious attitude towards YouTubers, um, you know, it just, you know, there was numerous times throughout that that he trivialized um, Yong's, uh, you know, uh, journalistic, um, you know, um, skills approach, and integrity, approach, yeah, intentions, yeah, everything, you know, mm -hmm. and I just uh, numerous times it didn't feel right. Exactly, and yeah. Yong was a class act, you know, and yeah, he was, you yeah. know, he really was a class act. He kept his cool. He mm. was always coming back to the professional point, you know, mm. of let's get back to what we're talking about. And he was happy to disagree, but you know, again, <laughs> I'm, I was very surprised to see that. And yeah, it was a shame. It was and, a real shame. And I think it really, um, it's, it's somewhat hypocritical in the context of Kotaku. I mean, Kotaku, I, I will, I will never forget. There are so many articles that I have read from Kotaku that just make me go, what the fucking fuck Detroit, are these Detroit? people thinking? Yeah. There's one, this, this Detroit one where literally the ti the article is titled, you know, David Cage games need to stop treating women like shit. Mm. And there's one line in it that reads that the black man could only be awoken from his like slumber or something by the motherly plight of the white woman. Yeah, and it then, was the most racially charged, it was. like sexual, gendered st like sentence yeah, that yeah. I've ever read in a video game article. Any editor with half a fucking brain would have like put a red line through that and be like, listen, I think that's a little bit much. Yeah. But like Kotaku publishes that shit because they understand that when you like do this, you sensationalize, you divide, you, you like, you. That that is part of their business model. Yeah. I'm sorry. But it is, and for and I know this isn't Jason who wrote that article. It was someone else. But Jason is part of that organization. I agree and, with that. And I... to suggest that, sorry, oh, no, 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 no. and to suggest that YouTubers are the ones that are, you know, always on in sort of dry or stirring up over anger, sensationalizing and provoking, over sensationalizing, or... it completely ignores the fact that print media websites, whatever else, do mm -hmm. the same sort of thing very often. And I think a lot of the time they do it in shittier ways than YouTubers yeah. do. So suggesting that YouTubers are the ones that are always provoking and creating drama and, you know, all this sort of stuff and, and, and saying that, you know, or suggesting that websites aren't equally involved in that same business mm. from a different perspective, I think that's very disingenuous. I agree. I think that, you know, the idea that Jason was saying that only YouTubers have, you know, agendas and perspectives, I, that's, I just completely disagree with that. Uh, that article about Detroit was a perfect example. There's many others. And, yeah. you know, both sides have uh, perspectives that, you know, that they want to put forward, mm. you know, and Yong went into the defense of saying, you know, he's 
he's a gamer and he was angry in that moment and that was the, that was the perspective that he wanted to put forward and yeah. he was completely warranted in doing that that's the, the the discussion itself which you know and I just see I disagree with a lot of what Jason says mm. but it's polite disagreement I understand his perspective I really do after that then um, the tweets began you know there was some the tweet tweets. stuff that they started um, and Jason said this on Twitter most of the comments on this video are anti-semitic alt-right shitbags which I hope Yongye thinks long and hard about but this one is actually perfect the tweet is basically just some garbage dude being like you don't have any gamer stuff in your background so yeah, how yeah. could you really be a gamer which obviously is fucking idiotic yeah. so we can just disregard that I think Jason was just being funny here like as in with the that, that specific comment he highlighted mm. I do this all the time as well I'm like hey guys look at this dumb comment you know yeah, maybe. I think he was just trying to make light in that comment but it was the stuff that he said above the comment that I think was very proper. Yeah, but I, okay. I just want to say quickly, I don't know if that is a joke because it, of course it is connected to the anti-Semitic alt-right shitbag comment. May, maybe Whatever. it's a joke, but Whatever. maybe. The fact that he says that, um, you know, most of the comments in the video are anti-Semitic alt-right shitbags, brackets, which I hope Yong Yeo thinks long and hard about. I think that's a pretty shitty implication. For um, him to kind of uh, package up Yong with his like with a couple of you know assholes yep. that might visit his page and make some shitty remarks, yep. you know it, it's it, it, it. When I saw that, I was just like, "What are you doing, dude?" Yeah, like, I think it's, there's a few things here. First of all, Jason Shry is hated by a lot of people, particularly hmm. people who. Uh, you know, anti-Semites, um, people who alt-right category, whatever else. And think he's a shill or whatever. Whatever, a like lot of the... people just hate Jason Schreier. Mm. So when he appears on a podcast and they've got a comment section, they're going to flock to that because they're going to want to say bad sure, shit, okay? Sure, sure, Now, I mean, I've watched Yong for years mm. um, and never once has Yong made anything remotely anti-Semitic. Like, exactly. that's just never, let's just remove that from or the Or racist in general. Racist Nothing. in general, no way. No. Um, young, young, privileged white man? Question mark. You know? <laughs> so, so that's number one. Number two, alt right. Now we might start when we talk about things like gender. Um, a lot of people might like to point to coverage of say Jessica Price or the recent Red Dead video of punching a feminist and say if you talk about that stuff in the way that you do, you're inviting in the alt right sort of camp. Again, okay? but I'm, I, I, of course, we've, we've both watched watched those videos. Never once did he you know, refer to, even with the feminist punching video, he was in the top comment saying, I do not support this type Correct. of content. You know, with the Jessica Price, he didn't even, it was not about the gender. He was really talking about her conduct at work. He never once questioned how, you know, if mm. uh, he, 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 there was nothing like that yeah. with Yong. Yong is not, look, I know channels that are appealing to the alt right crew. Sure. Okay? I know the names of them. I'm not going to talk about them now. Sure. But I, they, are, they are gaming channels that do that. And mm. I'm sure you know who I'm talking about as well. Yong Ye is not one of those Definitely channels. Not. He is 100% not one of those channels. So to suggest that, um, you know, he should think long and hard about that is really crappy. And it's really, yeah, it, 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 it's a really dick move because... It is a dick move after I'll tell you why, man, because, you know, Yong sat there and had a really polite, professional discussion and then he comes to Twitter to try and plant the seed that, you mm. know, his channel is for, you know, anti-Semitic and, and, and alt-right, you know, individuals or... It's just... It's not... It's not classy, man. Yeah, it's really not. It and bad. I was very surprised to see that because I knew exactly what he was trying to do there. Yeah. And, you know? Young actually responded to it as well. And Young said this. All I'm thinking long and hard about is that we had a conversation in which we both could share our perspectives. If that's somehow of less value to you than some comments, I don't know what to tell you. The horrible toxic comments are far from ideal, nor do I support or share those sentiments. I've done everything in my power to approach you with respect and civility and let you speak your mind, so I'm not sure a passive aggressive comment directed towards me is warranted. And then Yong goes on to highlight the fact that he's been hiding some of the more neutral or, you know, sure. the comments that were really sort of like appreciating the discussion. And praising the discussion Rather in than general. taking a partisan view. It's a really disappointing end to, you know, a, a generally good discussion, you know, and it's illuminating at the end to see, you know, into how Jason wanted to conduct how Jason wanted to conduct himself at the end of that mm. by trying to score a you know a, a, like a, a you know um, an after after a jab a jab you know to some anti semites or some alt rights that might pop up into the into the comment section yeah and it, a very unclassy act by trying to couple them in with Yong Ye yeah uh, completely unnecessary yeah I, you know? I do think so so. Look, uh, I've, overall, I think it was a very useful, very interesting discussion. As I said, I think both of them represented their own perspectives. Um, I 
certainly subscribe more to um, what Yong Ye might represent, which is the idea that we need to be honest about what's going on in the industry. Sure. We need to be angry about it when it's shit. Um, we can't excuse it because we think other games are good. Mm. Um, we have to care about all consumers, not just about the games or publishers or whatever that interest us. Mm. Um, I, I very much subscribe to that view. Uh, again, Jason, he's a good journalist. He's probably the best one out there. Yeah. But I didn't agree with his perspectives in this discussion. And I certainly didn't agree with the way that he conducted himself. Exactly. Afterwards. I think that, you know, my opinion, professional opinion of him still remains. Mm. Um, no, no two ways about it. Um, I agree with you. Just to finish off, it was very disappointing to see how he wanted to conduct himself, you know, in the interview and how he wanted to conduct himself after the interview. Mm -hmm. You know, and I think that'll definitely have an effect on how the consumer, um, you know, kind of goes forward and, and, and thinks of Jason's work. I'm sorry, but that, that's, that's how it sometimes happens, mm -hmm. you know. But um, anyway, I think that's, yeah. that'll probably wrap it up. It's been a long discussion, but we just want to talk about it mm. because uh, we think it was really worth talking about, you know. So um, let us know what you think. Again, I want to reiterate. Right. Let's just let's not attack Jason as a person, or exactly. Like, especially like his religion, or let's not and doing that. That's fucked. You know what I mean? Mm. Like that's straight up fucked. So let's just steer clear of that. Um, but if you've got views on like different perspectives that people have, whatever else, that's really good. Let's mm. let's have that discussion. You know? Definitely, definitely. Anyway, thanks very much for watching, guys, and we'll see you in the next less serious video. Young out. Back to the memes soon. Young out. Young out.